Today we're going to test out the R600 Max for the second time. In the first test, we could not charge while using a load, we could not use the X-Link chaining, we could not use the UPS function, and lots and lots of other problems. But EcoFlow told me that they did a firmware update and it should solve some of these issues. But before we get started, I want my viewers to understand why so many YouTubers are trying to promote this product in particular. EcoFlow is offering 8% commission for every unit sold through their affiliate tracking link. So there's going to be lots and lots of YouTube channels that are going to be like, oh, this is the best thing in the world. You have to buy it. It's because they're trying to make a lot of money off of you guys. All right. So be very careful when you see information on YouTube. And it amazes me that my initial test results were so bad and there's still so many YouTubers trying to promote this product. So yeah, do not pre-buy anything, all right? Wait until people actually have it. And there's actual reviews from people that paid with their own money until you buy a product. I would never pre-buy this or any other solar generator on the market. So yeah, without further ado, let's do the software update and see if they actually fix the problems. So here's the EcoFlow app and it shows both of my units are connected. So we're gonna click on the second unit and I have not updated this one yet. We go to system and we press check updates and then upgrade. Now that it's upgrading, you can see the light illuminate on this unit and we will come back in a few minutes when it's done. So I did the update and they will not turn back on. I don't understand why. So I'm trying to reconnect and they misspelled waiting. There's two T's. So yeah, they really have not thought through this app that much. Now they're finally connected. So let's try to control them remotely. Let's try turning on the light. Okay, it is not responding. I can't get it to work, you guys. Let's try the inverter. Okay, the inverter just turned on for this unit. Let's try the DC output. And this one's not working, so I can't get the DC to turn on. The AC remote control is working, but everything else is not. So I thought that it did a system update, but I think it failed because the version number is not correct. We do not have the most recent version. So we're gonna try upgrading again. And let's see what happens. It is painfully slow. Last time it took like 30 minutes. And yes, we are very close to the router. It's very fast internet here. So this unit was updating for over an hour and then it just disconnected randomly and it says device offline. And it was only like 10% of the upgrade. Going by its little graphic, it would take like 10 hours to upgrade the software. I cannot do it. So what I'm going to try to do is put the standby time to never. It was set to two hours and it cut off after one hour, but maybe this might help. And we're going to try updating it again. So let's go to the first upgrade, press upgrade and see what happens. After two and a half hours, I finally found a way to update the firmware, but it doesn't show an updated firmware version number. But the reason that I know that it's different is things are actually working now. I can remotely operate the light and also the inverter. But the firmware version number has not been updated. But it took two and a half hours for me to update this firmware. This was very difficult. It would disconnect halfway through it. So these units should actually be ready for testing. And this firmware update is only for the inverter, but it should help with the UPS function as they said in the email. So let's test that out first. So right now it's charging at 340 watts and we're gonna add a 600 watt load. And this is perfect, 560 watts at the output and 897 watts at the input. So it's actually working as a UPS, which is actually a very good sign. It never did this the first time we tested it. Now let's connect two of these together for UPS function and see what happens. Now the AC output is connected to the input of this one and we're going to add a load. And it's actually working. We have 900 watts going in over here, 560 watts going out, 540 watts in, and 540 watts going out. So this is great. I am actually very happy that it's actually working now. So to test this, we're gonna do a capacity test when these are fully charged. So I'm gonna disconnect the load, let them both charge up, and then we'll reattach the load and see what the capacity is. And while these are charging, I wanna mention some concerns that my viewers had, saying that because this is a pre-production model, it might not work as advertised. And I find that to be very silly because I actually got a letter from the CEO here, and it tells me what it's capable of doing. 
it says that if you chain it together, you get 1200 watts AC. When it failed me, I emailed them back and I said, hey, I'm not getting 1200 watts. I saw a picture on the Kickstarter page for this other cable. Do I need that cable? And they said, no, you don't. With the UPS function, I said, hey, do I need the USB-C cable? And they said, no, we have upgraded that you don't need it. So it took me multiple days and multiple emails and I got a letter from the CEO telling me what it's capable of doing and then it failed those tests. That's why I posted this video because I was frustrated for days on end and it would not work. So I'm hoping that this firmware update actually fixes all of these problems. I'm trying to give them a chance, but yeah, I'm trying to show you how frustrating this has been. Now they're fully charged and we can disconnect the charger and we can add a 600 watt load. And look at that, it's actually working. It's charging this one and powering the load. So everything's good so far. So let's come back and see how many kilowatt hours we have. So while I was gone, it turned itself off at 480 watt hours. And this one is completely depleted. And this one's at 92%. So we're gonna continue the test. So it just turned off because I turned on the first inverter to see if there's any more juice in the battery or maybe the voltage in the battery recovered, but then it shut down a couple seconds later and then disconnected power on this inverter. So if you are using these as UPS, you can't really use it when it's chained because it's going to be interrupted. And that defeats the purpose of an uninterruptible power supply if it will be interrupted. So yeah, do not put them in more than one unit at a time as a true UPS. So let's turn it back on. So we tested 880 watt hours at the receptacle, but it's rated for 1,152 watt hours. So what we're gonna do is divide it by the inverter efficiency, which I'm thinking from previous testing is 87%. And that gives us 1,011 watt hours. So we need to subtract this by what it's rated for. So even with inverter efficiencies accounted for, we're still missing 140 watt hours. So I don't think it passed this test. Power was interrupted and it didn't pull full capacity. So yeah, not very impressive. And we've got over temperature warning on both units. And this one hasn't been running for about an hour. So this is a very similar problem that we had with the EcoFlow Delta. And as we imagine, it's not charging because it's overheated, which is a good safety feature to have, but keep that in mind if you're trying to cycle this unit very quickly, you just can't do it. So yeah, I'm gonna come back in a few hours and we'll do the next test. It's been charging for a couple hours and it is very slow. So when these are warm, it's the same as the EcoFlow Delta. The charge rate is drastically reduced. Now we're gonna test the X-Link chaining feature and previously it failed at 900 watts, but it's supposed to supply 1200 watts. So we're gonna try it again. And this is 1150 watts and we're gonna test the capacity at that rate. Really? It doesn't work? Come on, man. Come on! <laughs> I actually thought it was gonna work this time. What a bummer, man. And they actually both shut down this time. In the previous test, only one would shut down. So this is slightly different. All right, now they're both running and we have the symbols showing that they're connected. So we're gonna add a load. And we're only pulling 1000 watts this time. So let's see if it can actually run this load instead. And it failed again. Really? No way. Even though it failed the test, we're gonna add the load and deplete the battery and see what the capacity is. Now we have a new problem. This one's in over temperature. I've waited an hour and it still cannot cool down. So I'm gonna have to wait until tomorrow to do finish up this test. So yeah, it's been a long day, but yeah, I'm gonna give up now. I am so tired of these things. So we'll come back to it tomorrow. Today's a new day and I've let them cool overnight so we shouldn't have an over temperature problem. But I've noticed as the inverter performance increases from this firmware update, so do the cooling management issues just like the EcoFlow Delta. So something to think about. Uh-oh, it shows overload and I didn't even turn on the inverter. So we might actually have a problem. We've got overload for no reason and then it turns off the output. How am I supposed to fix that? Well, this is unfortunate. I'm gonna try charging it up then. I guess this test has failed and it didn't use up the total capacity of the battery. That's a bummer. Okay, it showed the sign trying to charge but this one will not charge. This one started charging instantly but this one's having problems. I don't understand. This one is not working, you guys. I can't get it to charge. 
So I guess we're going to continue the test on this unit and just push that one to the side. We're going to see if it can handle a load while charging with solar. It previously failed this test and I'm hoping that they fix this. So now we have a 600 watt load and we're going to try to charge with this power supply that will mimic a solar panel at 20 volts. And it's actually working. It's been a couple minutes and it's still charging while the inverter is at full load. So this is great. I think they fixed this problem. Now I turn the load off and it is still charging, so let's add the load again and see if it changes. And it's still working, so yeah, they fixed this. Good job, you guys. Awesome. So this firmware update has solved quite a few issues, but it still failed numerous tests, so it still needs work. Also, this one is still dead. Every time I try to turn it on, it goes into overload. I cannot charge it, and I don't know how to test this one any further because it keeps turning itself off. So I really don't know what to say about this one. I think it's dead. Nothing else actually works on here too. You have to turn it on. And then when you try to turn these on, it doesn't let you. It shows overload still. And then it turns itself off. So yeah, that's a bummer. I don't know what to do there. <laughs> so I'm glad EcoFlow made these changes, but I'm pretty disappointed. I don't know why they would send this out to me. I think a lot of these companies make a lot of money off of these pre-sales or letting the consumer pre-buy it on a Kickstarter package. And this is a pretty strategic method because people will buy these things sight unseen without any reviews because they have all the features that they need. And I have to give EcoFlow credit for some of the features that this has. This is exactly what we want. And the R600 Pro seems to be perfect. Lithium iron phosphate battery. You can expand it with other 12 volt batteries. It can charge quickly. So I think they have the right idea, but they really need to fix these problems. So I really hope that they fix, especially the UPS issue with overload, because it shouldn't be doing that. But yeah, the inverter is working better, but now we have temperature management issues and the UPS goes into overload if you chain them. So yeah, I hope they fix that in the next update. I really don't wanna make more videos like this where I'm constantly experimenting for multiple days. Like the test at the end when we tested if it could charge while there's a load applied, it took me a couple minutes and I was done. Okay, that's how testing should be. But for me, I'm just running into problem after problem and just updating the firmware took two and a half hours. So that was very frustrating. And it is possible that EcoFlow will fix all of these problems and it will be a good device. But it just scares me all of these problems that I'm having. And I keep seeing other YouTubers saying, oh yeah, you should buy it, it's the best. It's because all these people are making a lot of money. So I would hold off and wait until there's further reviews by other people and see if it actually works well. I would wait until like six months after it's released just to see if it's reliable. So yeah, I hope you guys like this video and I will talk to you soon. Bye.